El camino del misterio suele ser, por lo general, áspero y solitario. Más allá de que existan investigadores de diferentes ramas, como la ufología, la parapsicología, las mancias, en este camino, el recorrido de aquel o cual camino para el investigador apasionado siempre es solitario. En este caso, el material que voy a compartirles se trata de una filmación del año 2010 donde se dan declaraciones muy fuertes sobre sucesos venideros y tal vez algunos de los que ahora mismo estamos viviendo en la actualidad a nivel planetario. El video en cuestión se subió al canal no tan lejos de la investigadora Gesami Martínez. Le agradezco por el espíritu de difusión, por lo cual tomo el video para poder seguir avivando esta llama y que todos nos enteremos de la verdad, que está ahí afuera a veces encubierta en un velo, otras veces riéndonos en la cara. Paso a mostrar el video y espero que lo disfruten. And the date is the 16th of February, 2010. And this is a bit of an unusual video presentation here because I'm taking the step of making a video as an interpretation and as a commentary on an audio interview which we did with an important witness who came and reported his story to Project Camelot a little while ago, uh, about a couple of weeks ago. And as with many of our witnesses, this person wanted to remain anonymous, but he has agreed that we transcribe the audio, and so we've got this as a transcript. And this is going to be released at the same time as the video, because it's important to be able to read the transcript at the same time as you're considering what I'm saying about it here. And as we come into this story, you're going to understand exactly why it's important to get all the information, to hold it all into a very fine balance. Now, this is a British person, and he worked in the British military for a number of years, and after he retired from the military, he worked in the City of London, in a fairly senior position, in a respected position, in the City of London. And for those people watching this video who don't know about the City of London, the City of London is like, it's like an enclave, it's like a financial enclave in the heart of London itself. Some people consider it almost a little bit like the Vatican, it's very old, it's very ancient, it's, uh, it's the heart of the financial system, not only of Britain, but possibly the world. Many researchers consider that it's very likely that the City of London calls the shots on the financial systems in, the, uh, in America. They've got control over the Federal Reserve, the Bank for International Settlements, a whole bunch of things that happen. This is like the nerve center of the financial world. And it's very Masonic, it's very ancient, it's very traditional. And our source attended a number of meetings with uh, senior Masons. And while many of these were interesting, they were routine by City of London standards. They were discussing financial affairs and so on and so forth. And then in the June 2005, he attended another meeting that he thought was going to be a routine meeting, but actually this was something rather unusual, and he realized it was unusual as soon as he arrived. In fact, in his interview with us, the one which we have the transcript of, you will see that uh, he says that he felt it was an accident that he was there. He shouldn't really have been there. He didn't know what was happening. And as such, he didn't really participate in the meeting. He was there as a little bit as a fly on the wall. He was just listening to what was happening. And at first, he didn't even understand what was being discussed. Now, the people there were Masons. They were senior Masons. They were about 25 or 30 people there 
including uh, senior politicians who most people in the UK would recognise by name. I do not know who they were. He didn't name them and I didn't ask them, but he said these are well-known names. The chief of police was there, representatives from the church, representatives from the military, 25 or 30 people. And as he listened to this story being discussed, it was an informal meeting, it wasn't like at a big table with, with kind of notepads and, and, and water glasses and minutes and an agenda and a chairman. There were just people in a room who were talking about all of this stuff. And what they, what they were talking about was a plan that had clearly been made a long time ago and what they were discussing was they were discussing the implementation of this plan. They were discussing how things were going, whether they were on track or not. And what, uh, for example, to give a flavour of this, they were discussing between them some of the problems that they had in the implementation of their plan. And as this little presentation continues here, you you will realise what the plan was, and I'm going to be revealing this in very much the same way as it was revealed to our witness and as he revealed it to me, bit by bit, step by step. The first thing that he heard was they were talking about the fact that Israel wasn't, didn't look as if it was getting prepared to attack Iran anytime soon. This was a problem. Even back in June 2005, they were apparently concerned that what it was that was planned on some kind of a timeline wasn't rolling out according to schedule, and this was an issue for them. So that attracted his attention very quickly, because he'd never been in a meeting when this kind of thing was discussed. Then uh, they were talking about China and how powerful China was getting, both militarily and financially, very quickly, and that the Japanese weren't doing what they were supposed to do, which was to interfere in some way with the Chinese financial system. They weren't doing that, and this was another problem because China was getting too strong too quickly. Other things that were discussed were, for example, the coming financial crash, the centralization of resources, everything that we saw starting to happen in October 2008, they were planning that and referring to it in their meeting in June 2005. So there was clearly a rollout of some plan here and he was quite shocked the more that he heard and when he really realized what was happening he was extremely shocked. And one of the reasons why I'm giving this video presentation now is to soften the blow and interpret this a little tiny bit because it is shocking information. And what I also want to do is I want to try and differentiate out between what it was that he reported because he'd heard it with his own ears and what it is that is his speculation and my speculation about how all this fits together. It's very important information. We need to know this stuff. Even though it doesn't look like it's going to be on track, I don't think this will happen. I think that there are a bunch of crazy people there who are extremely determined to do something and they were in a hurry, and this is important to understand, they were in a rush to try and roll out this sequence of events. Now what he described is what the sequence of events was. It starts with Israel attacking Iran. Now this hasn't happened yet. There have been a number of indications that, that, that there are forces which are trying to, to to push this into happening. You've only got to follow the news for the last two years to realize that the public is being prepared for a justification for this kind of thing. Iran is being set up as being the bad guys that deserve something to happen to them and so on and so forth. Now, that's going to be the start of what is like the opening gambit in a big chess game. And the plan is to provoke Iran or China to retaliate. And our guy, our source, who is a military man, is privately 
as convinced as he can be, although this has never been made public and this is not publicly known, that Iran does have nuclear weapons. He believes that they have been provided by China behind the scenes. And all of this is intended because it's all right with these controlling forces that Iran has nuclear weapons because they want them to be used. The plan is for either Iran or for China to retaliate after Iran is struck with a nuclear weapon. At that point there will be a limited nuclear exchange in the Middle East followed by a ceasefire. He heard this being planned in this meeting. This is being choreographed. It's like the script for a movie. This is exactly what's intended to happen. And during this time, the other thing that's being set up for this, and many people watching this will be aware that this is being set up in the background. We've had a lot of information about this from a number of good researchers from many countries who are reporting this on the internet that things are being set up in many of the Western countries for there to be heavy controls over populations, martial law, increased powers on um, security forces who are not just the, uh, the army or the police, but in Britain, for example, our source said that he knew, he absolutely knew personally for a fact, that a very large number of private security people, their powers were being increased to give them um, the ability to arrest people, the ability to detain, the ability to handle riots in streets. And here we're talking about just regular people working in private security. People who give the parking tickets on the streets. Their powers are being increased in the same way. And uh, last year we heard President Obama talking about how he wanted to have a sort of national guard at home in America ready to handle this kind of thing. There are a lot of indicators that this is being set up. And in this rollout of this crazy scenario where it is intended that there will be a limited nuclear exchange in the Middle East, the idea is that as the world looks upon this with horror, then they will demand from their governments that there are heavy controls over travel, over communication, over people who meet, over people who protest in the streets. They want to make sure that they don't have uh, crazy bombers on airplanes, crazy bombers in the shopping malls. They want to make sure, and because people will be driven into fear by this, they'll request and demand and insist on heavy controls from their governments, which will be justified. And this is where you're going to kind of get the martial law situation in all the Western countries. It's intended as a justification. All of this is just the start of something because this story gets much bigger and it's pretty horrifying. And if watching this now you're feeling a little bit shocked, this is how I was feeling when I heard this information and this is how our source was feeling when he was hearing this information in this meeting because this is just the beginning. Now, during the time of this ceasefire, everyone's shocked Everyone's frightened. Everyone's really terrified about where this is going to go. There are all kinds of heavy controls over populations everywhere. And then the next thing that happens in this, in this chess game that's being played is that biological weapons are released on China. He heard this being discussed in this meeting. They will release a flu-like virus that will be genetically targeted against the Chinese population. It's racially targeted against the Chinese people. It's designed to spread like wildfire and to knock out a large number of the Chinese people. And these people in this meeting were laughing about this. They said, China will catch a cold. Those were their words. China will catch a cold. And they were laughing about the fact that these biological weapons will, will wreak havoc among the Chinese population. And after that, then what effectively will be a kind of plague will actually spread right across the world to the West as well. Our source was not clear whether this was a Chinese retaliation or whether the thing would just spread out of control in the way that it would be very understandable 
if it did, whether it's racially targeted or not, these things actually mutate. So now you've got a situation where there's been a limited nuclear war in the Middle East. There's a pandemic that really is sweeping across the world and really is killing people very visibly. And you've got this totalitarian military lockdown in all the governments in the Western worlds because everyone's going to be in panic about all of this. And then, he said, then the real war starts something that would be justifiably called the Third World War with a much more major nuclear exchange. And at this point, I asked him, is this just about population reduction? What is this about? Why are they doing this? Why this insane Dr. Strangelove plan for just unleashing all of this stuff on the world. Why do it? Now, as our conversation went on, I started to, to, to find answers to those questions. Now, some of this is speculation. I want to share this speculation with you because it's important enough that we work together here to figure out what's going on. And there are some clues, there are some very important clues that I'm going to present to you here in this video. He said, absolutely, it's about population reduction. So I said, well, in this meeting, did they mention any figures? And he said, yes, they did, 50%. Half the world's population, this is planned as per the Georgia Guidestones. For those of you who don't know what the Georgia Guidestones are, it's a stone monument in Georgia, in America, that was erected anonymously a number of years ago, it's in eight languages, and it's like an Illuminati manifesto for a new world, as it were. And just hold that thought about this being a manifesto for a new world. This is an important concept here in what I'm presenting. One of the key parts of this manifesto for this new world is that there should be a population of 500 million people. Now, 500 million people is an enormous reduction from the nearly 7 billion that we've got at the moment. That's that's pretty much 95% of people who, who would no longer be on this planet. And 50% is, is a step towards that. And there's a reason why they're doing all of this. There's a reason why they're in a hurry. There's a reason for this insanity. And when he was explaining this, then he said that they have a name for this plan. This project has got a name. And, and I said, well, what is this name? He said, it is called the Anglo-Saxon Mission. The Anglo-Saxon Mission. Now, I'd heard that before. It was something historical, I think, to do with the Crusades quite a long time ago. But I hadn't heard it in the present day context, and neither had he. And Later on, as he continued to tell his story, I began to understand what I thought this might be about. Hence the title of this video and the reason why I want to share this information with you because we need to work together to figure out what's going on here. It's extremely important to understand. There's a plan, I believe, that Hitler would be proud of, which is so evil, it's so Machiavellian, it's so hard to face up to, it's so unbelievable that I need to put it on the table for you so that you can consider whether or not this might be a possibility. The plans that I've been describing are definitely a possibility because he heard them with his own ears in this meeting. Everything I've described up until now, up to and including the a major outbreak a major outbreak of hostilities after the limited war. So the sequence is as follows. The planned sequence is as follows. Israel attacks Iran, then there's a ceasefire, then uh, during which time there is heavy governmental military controls over populations in all Western countries. Then China is attacked by a biological weapon. It's a flu-like disease that spreads like wildfire. This goes all over the world, and then they have a major Third World War. And then, by this time, 50% of the population will be destroyed. 
And not only because of the war or the plague, but because, as many of you watching this will understand, the infrastructure goes down in situations like this. Um, there's no food in the supermarkets, there's no gas in the pumps, there's, there's, um, the telecommunication goes down, there may not even be water coming out of the taps. Um, people are, are kind of thrown back into, into a Victorian era without the facilities to handle this, because most people don't have their vegetable gardens, they don't have their horse and cart, they're not able to survive in the way that we used to be able to. We're very, very vulnerable in our technological advancement, we're extremely vulnerable. And of course, the controllers know this. At this stage, our source was speculating about why are they in a hurry? Why do they want to do this? And there's a sort of heavy irony here, which is like, uh, I was saying, well, if you're gonna plan the Third World War, then why not take your time over it and get it right? and, and do a really good job. You can, you know, this could be in 20 years time or 30 years time, it doesn't really matter. Why is there in such a rush? And our source said that he felt from inside information he's continued to receive that this is still timed for something around 18 months from now. And that puts it around about the middle of 2011. He doesn't know this for sure because these events aren't calendar driven. They're they're actually event sequence driven. In other words, this has got to happen before that happens, and then after that the next thing can happen, then after that the next thing can happen. So a whole lot of things have got to be in place before all the dominoes fall over, so to speak. And they seem to be behind schedule in some of this. There are some planned events that definitely haven't happened. One of the things which I remembered when I was hearing this story was that our source, Henry Deacon, and many of you who've watched uh, Project Camelot videos and read their reports for the last uh, three years will know that when we met Henry Deacon in 2006, he said that in his own inside information was that there would be a war against China in 2008. Now that didn't happen. And all this time, at that time it didn't make any sense, and even now it didn't make any sense. It's like, well, all right, but why do this? Why do this? Why do this? Now, this was his answer. And our source is a pretty smart guy. He's been in the military. It's a totally different story that he didn't debrief in our audio transcript, which you have the opportunity to read, but he's had his own ET experiences in the military. He's got his own sources of information about some of the background for this. He says, that he's as sure as he can be that the, that the people who are calling the shots in the world, you can call them the Illuminati, the Controllers, the Kapal, whatever name you have for them, they believe that there is going to be what he called a geophysical event, a major geophysical event. He says that the best information that he's got is that the insiders believe that this is going to happen or they are concerned that this is going to happen and many of you watching this will know that this isn't a completely crazy idea there have been trillions of dollars that have been spent on deep underground bases for some reason which we don't know why it is you'll know about the seed bank in Svalbard this is in the public domain where all the seeds of all the plants and all the crops in the world have been buried deep inside a granite vault in northern Norway. There are many precautions being taken as if something might happen that could really threaten some of these valuable resources, including the seed banks of the world. Now, if there is going to be a geophysical event as they believe, this is because it seems to be preserved Illuminati inside knowledge, whether it's true or not, that there are repeated cyclical geophysical events about every 11,500 years. Information about what really happened to Atlantis was very probably in the Great Library of Alexandria that burnt down a couple of thousand years ago. 
there are persistent rumours that much of that information has been retrieved and it's in the Vatican Library. This is, this is information which is not in the public domain and which the insiders may have access to. Whether it's accurate or not, the important thing is to realise that they probably believe that this will happen and they're making their precautions. And this might be the justification for this insanity that we've just heard about in this plan. Consider this. He said, if there's going to be a major geophysical event, something like a pulse shift, maybe it's planet X, maybe it's some kind of energetic phenomenon that the solar system is going to be uh, moving into, that's going to somehow destabilize the, the Earth or the Earth's crust in some way, we don't know. But if there were to be a major emergency like that, something that would actually make a war look like look very inconsequential, the thing that will help the human race to survive it, or will help parts of the human race to survive it, is if there is already emergency preparedness in place before it happens. In other words, if you knew that there was an emergency coming, if you knew, for instance, that there's a hurricane coming in to hit your city, then you put all the emergency preparedness in place beforehand. You have the troops ready, you have the infrastructure ready, you have the military ready, you have everything that you need ready to handle this situation so you can respond and react and recover in the best possible way. Our source suggests that the reason for this, 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 this whole Third World War scenario is that then the Western governments, with the Chinese out of the way, will be in a state of such totalitarian control of their own population that they will be best equipped to recover and rebuild the new world after a cataclysm. And he thinks that this is what's happening. And I have to tell you that this, that this terrible logic makes sense to me, that they would think that way. I'm not for a moment agreeing that this will happen. I think this is wild, crazy stuff, but if they believe that it's going to happen, then this could be their justification for this kind of, this kind of plan that we've heard about is really being discussed. And this now is my own speculation right now, which also makes sense to me, and I invite your comments and your thoughts about this. We need to work together to figure out what's happening here. It's called the Anglo-Saxon mission. What that told me was that the reason for the name is because this is a white racist agenda for the inheriting of the new earth. It's a plan that Hitler would be proud of. If they think that a new earth needs to be rebuilt, a new world, think of that little phrase there, if a new world needs to be rebuilt after a cataclysm, they want the Anglo-Saxons to be doing it. They don't want the Chinese to be doing it. They get the Chinese out of the way first, and then the Anglo-Saxons will inherit this new world with the, the other nations, the Asian nations, the African nations, the South American nations. Presumably, it is assumed that they won't have the resources to be able to handle the situation in, in any kind of a way that gives them the strength to recover after whatever it is that they think is going to occur. So, there are several other parts of this which, which also fit, and one of the reasons why this is an important presentation to make personally is my own personal thoughts, because up until now, I've been following a lot of the the, the well-founded research on these sorts of agendas. We've had our own sources of information over the last three years. But I've always had questions in my mind, like, why would they do this? You know, war against China? Why? Third World War? Why? And, and suddenly, a lot of these things start to make a little bit more sense. It's possible, for example, that when we heard from from Jordan Maxwell in our interview with him, which we did at the end of last year, 2009. He described to us how he had researched 
a number of repeating symbols and images that had been used ever since the time of Hitler, and even long before that, about the dawn of a new day. There's something very important in Masonic and Illuminati thinking about the dawn of a new day. And here we have possibly the reason for their belief that if you think about the possibility of a cataclysm, if they think this is really going to happen, the 2012 movie that many of you will have seen, after all of the flood and all of the earthquakes and tsunamis, then you've got these big ships sailing across a calm sea with the sun streaming through the clouds, and you've got the dawn of a new day, and the implication in that movie is that now those people will be able to rebuild the new earth because those are the survivors. It's the modern-day Noah's Ark. It's possible that the dawn of the new day, that it refers to that. And it even occurred to me, and I'd be interested for other researchers to offer their views on this, that the very term the New World Order that we first started to hear about 20 years ago, actually longer ago than that, but the New World might be the post-cataclysmic world, the New World. It might be the order for the New World after the cataclysm. They may be planning who will inherit the New World. It may be nothing less than this. Maybe this is what the new world order is all about. It really is the order, the plan, for the new world that they think is coming. They think this is going to happen. Now, I say again, it's very, very important to differentiate out all of this information here. I don't believe this is going to happen at all, but they might be doing something crazy to try and safeguard what they believe is their own interests. This is what we need to be aware of here. And what I want to do is I want to just state really clearly why there are profound reasons for, for not believing that anything like this is going to happen. There are a lot of things that haven't happened which were intended to happen. Many of you will remember in the, I think it was the 30th of August 2007, there was a B-52 bomber that flew halfway across America from Minot Air Force Base the Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana with six armed nuclear cruise missiles on its wingtips, something that could never happen by accident. It was illegal, it should never have happened. You can't even smuggle a bullet out of the weapon storage area in an Air Force Base without there being a whole bunch of signatures and everybody knowing about it, let alone making the mistake of loading armed cruise missiles onto a B-52 bomber with nobody noticing it. There was a reason why that happened, and that was actually prevented from going any further. It stopped at Barksdale in Louisiana. Some very brave airmen blew the whistle on that, and they did their job, and they reported it up the line. It appeared very, very briefly in the mainstream media, and after that it was completely covered over, and everyone said it was a mistake. That was no mistake. There was a reason why they did that, and what many of you don't know is that at that same time, at the end of August, a group of anonymous investors bet two billion dollars that the stock market would fall by 50% before the 21st of September 2007. They stood to gain four and a half billion dollars if their bet had, had succeeded. These were what are known as put options. And um, the insiders in the stock market, they call them Bin Laden trades. It's a sort of ironic description because of the betting that took place around about 9-11. OK, those people lost their bet. It didn't work. The plan didn't work. The stock market didn't fall. The bomber never went any further. And for all we know, that was intended to be the start of the Third World War. It never happened. OK. We heard a few minutes ago, I was describing how Henry Deacon described that the war against China was meant to start in 2008. That didn't happen. A lot of people thought that, that was crazy. A lot of people thought he was crazy. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he heard something that was a real plan, but they're two years behind schedule, and maybe this will never happen at all. There are a number of other things that, that may have been planned and which have never transpired. It's very interesting to think about the so-called Mexican flu outbreak, the swine flu outbreak. For the last six to nine months, we've been looking at 
uh, a scenario where it looked as if they wanted to roll out vaccinations, they wanted a lot of people to get ill, they wanted to, to announce a pandemic. Even now, there have been proposals to extend this pandemic declaration for another two years, and nothing's happening. In England, we call it a storm in a teacup. There's nothing happening here. But maybe something was intended. Now, if it wasn't intended, it's possible that all of that could have been some kind of a test to see how people respond, to see how people react, to see how quickly it spreads, to see what the take-up of the vaccinations will be. And then, of course, us at Project Camelot and a number of other people who've been activists in this whole area trying to draw attention to all of this, now we're all on a database. They know who's going to stand up and start talking about all of this stuff. So it might have been an experiment, or it could have been a failed rollout of something. There's plenty of reason to believe that things are changing. This is the important thing. And those of you who've been following the work of David Icke, this is an important perspective here, because we support his work fully, in as much as he makes a beautiful presentation and he starts off by saying, we are infinite consciousness. There are many ways to put this, but it's very hard to disagree with that. We're immortal, godlike beings who've long ago forgotten what our power was. The potential of consciousness is enormous. It's very important to realize that how powerful we are may be the single most important component in this, in this, in, in this whole picture that enables us to save the day. This may be what it's really all about. Admiral George Hoover, who died in 1998, he was in the Office of Naval Intelligence in the US Navy. He talked to researcher Bill Burns, the editor of UFO magazine, and Bill Burns described this conversation with George Hoover to George Norrie from Coast to Coast AM. And what Admiral George Hoover told Bill Burns was the biggest secret according to what the American Navy had found out. Very, very interesting story. They were talking about the Roswell visitors and Admiral George Hoover said that these visitors were us from the future. They were time travelers. They weren't extraterrestrials. Now, other researchers and whistleblowers have spoken about the same thing. And this is fascinating in itself. But what Admiral George Hoover said the biggest secret really was, it had to do with the abilities and the, the power of the consciousness of these travelers. Because they were us from the future, what the military authorities had found out was what humans are really capable of. And he said that this had been buttoned up really tight because if we knew how powerful we really were, how powerful we really could be, then we would, in his own words, cause chaos around us and this could never be permitted. We could rearrange the reality around us in the way that we wanted to, in the way that, if this is real, that the future humans have learnt how to do, which gives them access to these sorts of incredible abilities, such as time travelling. Um, Philip Corso, in his book, The Day After Roswell, described in some detail how his understanding was that the way the craft works was they were like an amplification of the pilot's own consciousness. It was their consciousness, it was their ability to travel and bilocate that was amplified by the craft, and that actually all of these abilities are basically abilities connected with the consciousness of the beings themselves. And if they are us, this is the message for all of us here. We're being deliberately dumbed down. Our food is being poisoned. Our children are being lied to in the schools. We're being fed propaganda in the media. We're being forced into this tiny little box. We're being kept busy with game shows and ball games. And we are discouraged from really finding out what it is that is our heritage on this planet. Eric von Däniken has just published a book 
which is called History is Wrong. There's so much which we are denied. George Green describes that we are known as the useless eaters, this, 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 this surplus population of, of billions of people, with a tiny number of people at the top of the heap who are dependent upon us to police each other and to laugh at each other and to stop each other from getting out of line because we're encouraged to conform to how we're meant to be. And so there's this straitjacket that there is the opportunity for us to break out of and it's this straitjacket which has been deliberately put in place by these very people who've been creating this plan. Where this plan originates from, it's very interesting to speculate. Our source told us that this has been in place for a long time. He first heard about the Anglo-Saxon mission as long ago as 1976. The Illuminati symbolism about the dawn of a new day has been going on for a long time. Many people think that this plan requires such a superhuman level of intelligence and strategic understanding and is so ruthless and so cold that the logic suggests, and, and David Icke says this, Jordan Maxwell says this, we say this ourselves with full agreement, that this didn't come from a human source. People aren't capable of doing this against other people. There's something else behind this. We have to think big. We have to think from the highest spiritual viewpoint that we possibly can do, that these people shouldn't be fought. What must happen is we, we just withdraw our consent from these things that are being done to us, from this plan that we're part of, and as I was saying just before, if you're in the military or if you're in intelligence services, withdraw your consent from this, because these plans can't happen without it. There's something about the, the Illuminati and the way that they're operating that is very limited. They're using force, they're in a box, they're trying to, 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 to counter what everybody I know is recognizing and referring to as a huge expansion of consciousness all over the world, an expansion of awareness. We get emails every day from people, often very young people, who are saying, I can really see what's happening in the world. Tell me what to do about this, but I'm ready. I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to to do whatever it was that I came here for. I don't know what that is yet, but I know that we've got big problems. 20 years ago, people weren't saying that kind of thing. There's a huge rollout of some kind of an expansion of consciousness. It's a morphic field that's growing enormously. And there's something that's changing. And my personal belief is that this is certainly being supported certainly being supported by benevolent non-human agencies, let me put it this way, who know about this kind of plan. They don't know whether it's going to happen or not, but they know that it's being, it's, it's being planned. A lot of contactees, there are some channel information, need to consider channel information extremely carefully, but there is channel information and there are contactee reports that all talk about scenarios like this and how we must be wary, how we must be careful, how we've got to guard against it, how we've got to insure against it, how we've got to be prepared for something like this. And it's entirely possible that this, that this increase in consciousness is happening in direct response with this, this, this escalation of violent, forceful plans. It's like, as I've often said in my own presentations in the past, it's a little bit like movie script itself, where you've got everything building up to a climax of so the forces of evil and the forces of consciousness just kind of getting ready for some kind of final confrontation. Now, I'm not trying to be biblical about this, and I know that this situation which I've just been describing is a little bit like the Armageddon War, but I do not believe that this kind of thing will actually come about. As I've said many times before, there's an interview which I did on Freedom Central, which you'll see on the Camelot site, where I say the single strongest reason that I have for not believing that anything is fixed, that anything that we're all doomed, 
that, that anything really bad is going to happen, although I think we've got a lot of problems to solve, is because I wouldn't be here, and neither would you watching this now. I'd have incarnated on another planet. I'd have gone somewhere else. I'm not going to go and sit here in the firing line with no possible way of escaping. There's a job to do here, and many of you watching this will be aware of the fact that, that we're here to do jobs. It's what Dolores Cannon calls volunteers. We may be here for a reason. We may be here to help catalyze this increase in consciousness, and that's what's going to prevent this kind of thing from happening, because if we do not agree that this is the future that we want, then that's not what we're going to experience. We do all co-create our reality, we do all have a part in it, and I profoundly believe that by becoming aware of these plans, this is the way that we avert them. There's a difference between prediction and prophecy. These are two words in the English language that are easily confused with each other. Prediction and forecasting is saying, okay, in three months' time, this is what's going to happen because this is what the data leads us to conclude logically. That's all about forecasting and prediction. A prophet does something different, and it's a word to be used with care because it's often misused, it's often misunderstood, and it's like a biblical term, and some people react against it for that reason. But what a prophet always used to do was to say, listen, if we don't wake up and if we don't take action, then this is what's going to happen. And the purpose of the prophet giving this prophetic warning is not to warn people that it will happen, but to say, listen, you've got to change something here. You've got to change the way you're doing things. You've got to change the way that you're being. You've got to change the way you're interacting with each other. You've got to change your whole attitude. Whatever it is that you change, then the purpose of the change is so that this prophesied event doesn't happen. And so what we have here is we have a kind of prophecy. It's not a prediction. And I'm using this word very, very carefully because the reason why I'm making this statement, the reason why we're releasing this information is to make sure that this doesn't happen. What are we going to do with this information? It's going to be translated into every language that we can. The video is going to be subtitled in Chinese, Arabic, Russian, Spanish, every other major language. I want this video to be picked up by the Chinese. I want this to be escalated up the line. The Chinese are very sensitive about videos that refer to them, especially ones with Chinese subtitles. This will be reported right up the line to Chinese intelligence, to the Chinese military commanders. And the reason for that is because, first of all, if this is nonsense, it doesn't matter. Okay, But if this is a really serious threat, then those are the guys who need to know about it because their first nuclear response, which is designed to be provoked, is the thing that actually sets this whole thing on fire. And so, to any Chinese military commanders who are listening to this, don't do it. Okay, None of us must do anything here that is in alignment with their plans. There's a wonderful scene in the Avatar movie that I loved so much, which was when the woman helicopter pilot who was ordered to fire her weapons at the big tree, she's just about to fire and then she says, I didn't sign up for this. And then she turns around and she goes home. She's not going to be part of this. There are many people in the military who never signed up for anything like this. There are many people in the intelligence services. They never signed up for anything like this. They signed up when they were young, thinking that they are doing the best thing for their country, thinking that they are doing the best thing for mankind. They are not all evil at all. And so as a direct message to those of you in the military and the intelligence services who may who may be watching this or may have had this brought to their attention. You don't have to do this stuff just because you're told. You need to support what's best for the human race. 
you don't need to follow orders if it's going to lead to a huge destruction here, which is in no one's interests apart from the controllers who have an agenda of their own, and that agenda doesn't feature you and me, that's for sure. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. I want you to consider this information. I'm not urging you to believe it. I want you to research it. I want you to check it out. I want you to read the transcript carefully, and I want you to see whether this correlates with anything else that you know and understand that's come to your attention. We're all working together here. We're not trying to force you to believe anything at all. We need to be careful about this information, but at the same time, if there's any chance that this is true, if there's any chance that this is for real, then we have to know about it, okay? And if you are not sure what it is that you should be doing, then I say the same thing that I always say, which is do whatever it is that you came here to do, because most of you watching this video are here for a reason. I do understand that you may not know what the reason is yet, but you're probably here for a reason. You're probably watching this video for a reason. Do whatever it is that you came here to do. This is Bill Ryan, Project Avalon, Project Camelot. It's the 16th of February, 2010. Thank you. No olvides darle pulgar arriba y suscríbete a mi canal. Espero que te haya gustado y nos vemos en el próximo video.